Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage from Blue Vishnu, Alex Henry. Hello. Hey, let's start this thing. So, oh no, I blew my slide. Let me, let's go back, ignore, ignore, go back. Okay, everybody, I have been very, very fortunate in my career to have a very successful one as a photographer and as a interactive director. I have worked with some of the greatest acts in the world, the most talented people in the world, and won some very prestigious awards. But the fact that I'm standing here in front of you guys today is still amazing to me. I kind of feel a little bit like an imposter, a fraud. And this kind of goes back to up until the age of 29 or so, I, my whole life had been a whole series of started and abandoned projects. Uh, I, I couldn't finish a thing. Um, and that was all about to change when I got an insight that would change my life forever. So my brother, who was on, uh, he was on leave from medical school and he came out to visit me in LA. We went, we went, uh, we went hiking and he was telling me about uh, a project that he was working on, actually a paper that he was working on about ADD. Now this was a subject that I heard about but I didn't really know much about. So he was talking about it going on and I, don't, I couldn't even pay attention to be honest. But eventually it stuck in. He's talking about me, this is me. It's like he's telling me about all these behaviors that were me and, uh, and it was a revelation, it was huge because suddenly there was a name for a thing and it, it, it had described certain behaviors and those behaviors uh, were, were things that I could do. But I could take that information, I could basically build in all of these other behaviors to compensate for, for the shortcomings and to build on the strengths of this thing. So within, within a month, I, was, I, had, I had released my first photo show. And within a year, I had been working with some of the biggest acts in the world. My life had literally changed overnight. And just a little bit of information, a little bit of uh, insight could open up a whole world for me. So this is the first of four ideas that I really want to share with you guys today. And they all lead up to one fundamental belief. And that is that we are on the verge of getting a whole new set of tools for self-development that we've never had access to in all of human history, and it's going to make our lives better. And I'm talking about personalized 3D avatars. So what's my interest in all of this? Well, I have a company, and uh, my company is called Blue Vishnu. We, we do high-resolution scanning. We turn them into avatars. And we're named after Blue Vishnu, we're actually named after Vishnu, the Hindu god, who is known for sending his, uh, his avatar to Earth in order to restore a balance in the world. And I believe that everyone, that you guys can, you guys can use your avatars in a very similar way to, uh, as a tool for communication, as a tool for, uh, for gaining insights about yourself and ultimately restoring a, an imbalance in your, in your world. Um, I actually don't have my presenter notes, so I was going completely off of memory. I don't know if you guys can actually turn the, the notes on the screen. If not, then I'm just going to switch over. No? All right, well, let, let's weigh it. But, um, okay. Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, let's go back to the... All right, no, go back to the thing. We're gonna, we're gonna do this, uh, we're gonna do this like uh, keynote style. Okay, groovy. Ah, oh, thank you for the notes. Sorry guys, a little technical difficulties. Okay, so moving right along. What is an avatar? Well, an a this is an avatar. It was taken from a 3D scanner. And uh, this is an exact copy of my friend Jimmy. Now, this, we can take the scan as a ground truth, right? And we can make it into an avatar. That avatar can look exactly like him or can represent him and be much more aspirational than truth. 
but it's really so much more than this. This is about possibility. This is about the foundation of what can be. Because an avatar is really just a tool, right? But when combined with data, computer vision, machine learning, then it's a really powerful tool. So your personalized 3D avatar can actually really help you. It can help you make better decisions, communicate better, and ultimately change your life. So the key to all of this working really is understanding the difference between reality and perception. So for the sake of this talk, let's just call reality over here. Uh, reality is the state of things as they are, right? So it's just measurable stuff as they are. And over here, we have perception. And that's really just your brain trying to make sense of all the sensory information that's out there. And they're two different things. So it's understandable that it's natural that there would be a gap between perception and reality. Now, alone, that's not a problem. That's fine. But, but your perceptions dictate your behaviors. They dictate your actions. And if they're not aligned with reality, then your actions won't really reflect your desires. So what this can do is create, uh, it can create cognitive dissonance. And that is our enemy. That's terrible. Two cognitions, completely out of pose. It's very psychologically uncomfortable. So to improve your quality of life, it's understandable that changing your perception to align closer to reality could be a very useful exercise. Put another way, changing your perception can change your reality. I'm going to give you a personal example. So recently, I just tried to lose a, some holiday weight. And, uh, and I started working out every morning. I, I started running a couple of miles in the morning. I eat really well. I'm very healthy. And I couldn't figure out why I was just not losing weight. So I have a friend who's a trainer. Have you guys ever had a trainer who's had you log your weight? Is this some, or not log your weight, sorry, log your food, your food intake? So he had me do that. In fact, he had me write down everything that I would eat on a normal day. What's my typical meal? And you can see my typical meal. This is a model citizen right here. Oatmeal, green tea, green tea, salad, salmon. This is a good, healthy guy, I think. And then he had me actually log everything that I ate as I ate it for about a week. Now, this is something that was an actual typical day for me. You can see that, that my picture of a very healthy person was really, it was really a delusion. And so what my friend did was he, he shattered my perception of this model uh, healthy guy. Even better, he had me shatter my own perception. Again, a little bit of data affected my behavior. And just being aware of that really allowed me to make some big changes. So, so let's recap. Reality, perception, they're, they're, they're linked. And if you change your perception, you can change your life. So what are some tools that can change perception? Well, I, my example is data. Is a, raw data is a really useful tool for changing perceptions. But it can be very abstract. So what are some very powerful visceral tools for changing perceptions? Images can be a very powerful changer of perceptions, as we understand. And it's illustrated really well by a story of uh, a, young, a, a young dancer named Mickey. And Mickey was passionate, she was driven, and she had a love for ballet. Growing up, Mickey never saw herself as a ballerina because Mickey was black. And there were really no images of black ballerinas for her to project herself onto. I'm quoting Mickey now. There's generations of white girls who can see themselves as ballerinas. We don't see ourselves up there, so it's not something we can even think we can dream. Well, Mickey got that image when she found her mentor, and her mentor believed in her so much. She believed in Mickey, the ballerina, so much that she was able to project that image onto, onto Mickey, and Mickey could see it and believe it. That perception was shifted, and then reality could follow. We now know Mickey as Misty Copeland, who made headlines last year for becoming the, the first African-American to ever be a principal dancer at the American Ballet Theater. But more importantly that, than that, Misty, Mickey is, is now the image. She is the image for people everywhere. 
and that can change reality, not just for a single person, but for a whole generation. So images can change perceptions. Can avatars? Well, it turns out there is a lot of evidence to support this. A very recent study showing, looking at a mixture of normal and obese subjects showed that regardless of the subject's own body mass index, using thin avatars showed increased physical activity over those who had obese avatars. So just playing as a thin avatar can make you work harder? That's pretty amazing. Here's another study that looked at uh, embodiment of, uh, an ad of an avatar and how it can affect social cognition. So they really asked, what would it be like if you could walk, truly walk in another's shoes? So they took 60 light-skinned uh, participants and had them embody both black and white avatars and measured how nervous they were when they were confronted by a white avatar. And they measured implicit racial bias both before and after. What they found was putting yourself in the skin of a black avatar reduces implicit racial bias. And they published it in an aptly named study paper called Putting Yourself in the Skin of a Black Avatar Reduces Implicit Racial Bias. Really good name, very descriptive. You didn't bury the lead there. So, so avatars can change perceptions. Question is, can your personalized 3D avatar be more effective to change you? Jeremy Balinson uh, at Stanford's Virtual uh, Humans Interaction Laboratory has studied many of these interactions for years. And one study, one very interesting study, looked at bonding with an older version of yourself can motivate participants to save for retirement. They found those who actually interacted with an older version of their virtual self, subsequently put twice as much into a savings account as opposed to those who hadn't. So meeting yourself, your virtual self, literally changes your behavior. What, what is this? This is, uh, this is pretty incredible stuff. Is this, this is really makes sense? Um, connecting with your virtual self in a virtual environment will have such an impact on the physical? Well, we're really already doing that. We're, or, as it turns out, we're already really good at, at uh, manipulating our own avatars. In fact, we are, in a, in a way, our own bodies are an avatars for us. And we dress a certain way to get in with a crowd. We can gesticulate in order to get our message across more. We can, uh, we can smile to attract a mate. I just smiled right at you guys. That was probably pretty creepy for you, so I apologize. <laughs> Smile. <laughs> so we're already doing this. We're already doing this, and it makes perfect sense, and we're already really good at this. What's interesting to me is how, as we're building up these virtual worlds now, and this is something that's very relevant to today in 2016, we're building all these great virtual worlds. What, what, uh, how your avatar can actually give you agency in, phys in vi virtual world that you don't have access to in the physical world. For example, imagine being able to have a conversation in a virtual world with somebody who is deaf and your avatar was signing and communicating in a way that, that uh, really makes sense. There's, there's dozens of exper experiments that, that demonstrate this. Taller avatars give you uh, more confidence, an older avatar of yourself makes you think about saving. A physically fit avatar makes you more fit. So I'm going to leave you with one demonstration. And uh, remember how I, I went to see my trainer friend. We're going to switch over to the, the computer here for the demo. So I'm going to introduce you to my avatar. Now, this is my avatar. This is something uh, about two and a half, three weeks ago, I, I hopped in our 3D, our 3D scanner. And this is sort of my avatar. This is actually not really. This is, this is what I thought I looked like at the time. Um, the truth is, this is what I actually looked like at the time. This is kind of amazing to me, because something happened when I looked at my avatar. This, 
that doesn't happen when I'm looking in the bathroom mirror, because in the bathroom mirror, there's a wonderful ball of delusion that's happening back and forth that doesn't happen when you're looking at it, the avatar. You get this real objectification. And so this is, this is wild to me because this is like quantifiable measurement of my delusion. I think that's what that is. <laughs> and, and so when I started this process, I went immediately to start wearing a fitness tracker because I wanted to track data as I was trying to lose weight. And you can see uh, it was very inspirational for me to see that avatar. I lost nearly, uh, I'd lost nearly 15 pounds since I started doing that and got to the point where I really thought I was. So this is very interesting, and the, the data supports this. But what would, it, what would be the power if we could actually start looking at, uh, if we could start following the trends and maybe projecting into the future, right? So if we could, if we could uh, look, at all, look at my trends, and maybe I could project what I would look like in one month, maybe two months. Oh, that's great. That, I like that. I don't think I've ever had a six pack. So this is very inspiring. Now what if I was able to look at a, maybe a smaller slice of the data, maybe the last 24 hours, um, and see what I would look like a few months now, from now if I had kept, if I keep up my behavior of the last 24 hours. Okay, that's not, that's not good. Oh yeah, I remember what we had for dinner. Yes, that was not a healthy dinner, it was, yeah, okay. We all have to change that. Anyway, the point is, let's, uh, let's, switch, it back to the, um, let's switch it back to the keynote, please. And uh, let's put this guy, yeah, I like that. That's much better, yes. Point is, that's a trainer that I can believe in. That's somebody that's very aspirational. And I would, I would, uh, I, I, I would work to get that, uh, to get that um, reality. Ladies and gentlemen, we are on the verge of getting a whole new set of tools. And these tools will change our lives. They're going to make our lives better. And when they do, this will be the golden age of the avatar and the golden age of you. Thank you very much. <laughs>